Now, the the story that we heard on on uh, the Chappelle show, yeah, with the whole basketball game, yeah. Number one, how accurate was that? It was totally accurate to every point of the whole story. Okay, so tell me, tell me from your point of view, how that whole Prince. Eddie Murphy, Mickey Free, Charlie Murphy story yeah. kind, of, kind of came together. Well, you got to understand, first of all, I had already won a Grammy for Eddie Murphy's movie, Beverly Hills Cop. So Eddie Murphy and I were friends. You know, I had been on the set of uh, Saturday Night Live as Eddie's guest before, and, and I knew Charlie and Uncle Ray and all of Eddie's crew. And so we used to go out all the time to this one hot spot in LA, a few of them, and uh, Prince would always be there. I'd have my little table, Prince has his table, Eddie Murphy has his table, uh, you know, and we all used to talk and hang out and, and stuff. And Prince would have people come up to his house after the clubs would close to hear new records, to hang with him or whatever. And I'd been there a couple times, but on that particular night, Eddie Murphy and his crew came. And it, it was Prince and, and I, and at the time, my wife, who, who was an actress named Terry Coakley, and we were sitting there and Prince said, let's play basketball. And I'm like, what? <laughs> it, you know, and Prince's brother was with us, who was a huge, tall guy, basketball player. So we went out in Beverly Hills to the court, Eddie Murphy, Charlie Murphy, and Uncle Ray, and me and Prince and Prince's brother, and those were the teams. And uh, I took the ball out and Prince said, give me the ball back. And I was like, okay. <laughs> and Eddie Murphy's looking at me like, oh yeah, free, it's on. I'm like, mm -hmm. Because I, you know, I'm like, we're in our street clothes, bro. Remember, we just came from the club. Okay. So we're in our street clothes. So Prince said, give me the ball back. And I swear to you guys listening, wherever you're going to be, Prince took the ball and it was like Michael Jordan after that. <laughs> shot after shot, like pff, nothing but net. And I looked at Eddie and I was like, oh yeah. You know what I mean? Okay. And after we were done, true story, Princess Cook at the time, her name was Randy, cooked us pancakes. <laughs> Blouses, true story. Okay, I mean, were you guys wearing blouses? Kind of, we sort of. Uh, hey, we had ruffles on the shirts. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? High heels. Prince had on high heels. I had some heels on. I don't think, but I'm five ten anyway. So Prince had his club clothes on. Yes, he had on probably six inch heels, Wait, playing so ball. He, he was playing basketball in six inch heels. Well, well, well. How's that even possible, dude? He was doing that one step back shot. He would be dribbling. You'd come up on it. He step back. <sighs> Nothing but net, like Jordan and like Pippen and like, you know, like the guy for Golden State Warriors. I mean, it's just, he was just hitting and it was sick and people were, I was like, oh my God, you right? And then we won and then yeah. we ate blueberry pancakes, blueberry pancakes. Blueberry pancakes. Man, they were good too. <laughs> so yeah. how, did, how did Eddie Murphy and Charlie and all them take the loss? Well, they were laughing and dying. Asked, I mean, uh, ask Charlie, they were like, what? It was so funny, you had to recognize, you had to laugh. You had to give Prince respect and his props. He was like dribbling around you like, like Michael Jordan and shooting like Michael Jordan. I mean, forget about it. And they laughed and we were all friends and they laughed and it was like, yeah, Prince did it. Prince after, did it, yeah, so it was man. a three on three game. Yeah, man, and that's, the, and that's the, how it went down. Right. It was amazing. <laughs> how, how did you feel when you, uh, when you saw the skit on The Chappelle Show? The best story is my mother at the time called me and said, son, they're making fun of you. They're making fun of you, son. They're, they're saying you're a girl. And they're, I'm like, what? Who's, who's talking about me, mom? She goes, it's on TV. It's on this show. And so right when she told me that, I said, okay, I'm going to go look. So I went and looked. I started laughing because I see Charlie talking. And, and when he said it, this new cat in Shalomar. I started laughing because I knew what he was talking about. And right, probably, I don't know, a day later, Charlie Murphy sent me an email that goes, I got you. I got you good. <laughs> right, because he was like, yo, because Prince had this girl with him. No, Prince and had this cat like, named Mickey Free. The new cat in Shalomar named Mickey Free. And all the fellas is going, mmm, Shalomar got a new girl in the band. She bad as a mother, bleep. And then Charlie said, and Mickey Free is not a girl. You know, that's how <laughs> that's it started, you know. It's a dude. That's but Mickey you know, Free. it's a dude. But <laughs> you know, in those days, I was really getting people thought I was a girl sometimes. You know, the way we dressed, hmm. and you know, I wore a lot more eyeliner then, brother. You know, and okay. and and yeah, and it was funny. I mean, when you look at 
for example, hip hop today, yeah, and you see artists like Young Thug, mm. you know who that is? Of course. And he wears dresses. He uh, says he wears girls' clothes yeah. and stuff like that. Uh, and I think in an interview he he said like I'm on my prince I'm on my prince thing. Yeah. Um, but when you see artists who are androgynous these days, what's your take on it? It's part of the music business. It's part of your creative your creative essence. It's part of you getting attention. It's just the music business. I mean, even if you're gay and happen to do it, it's cool, man. Whatever. You know, it's part of the whole thing. Image has always been part of the business. Be it wearing dresses, be it wearing high heels, eyeliner. You know, there's a I was a lucky guy. You know, I was one guy that actually met Gene Simmons and climbed the mountain and got lucky, won a Grammy and some Platinums, met Prince and recorded. There's a million people out there that would love that opportunity. So anything that you can give yourself to get noticed in the business as we know of life, then yeah. do it, man. There's no rules. Gene Simmons used to say that to me. There's no rules for you, Mickey. Right. None. And so that's, and I, I, I applaud that. Yeah. Well, I think the most like risque thing that, that Prince did was he had the, the chaps with the, with the ass with the booty out. out. Yeah. Yeah, man. When you first saw that, what was your take? I was like, man, I gotta get me some of them. <laughs> <laughs> I need to get me some of them booty, uh, booty, booty out chaps, be, chaps. Because you know why? Because every girl was looking at them booty out chaps, and you know they didn't stop the girls from coming around. And, and in those days, it was all about the women, but not for me, really. It was about, the, you know what I'm talking about. So okay, it didn't matter to me. It was just part of Prince. It was what he did, you know, see through pants. I mean, everything, bro. He did it all, you know? Sure. So did you get some booty chaps yourself? No comment, Vlad. <laughs> no comment, brother. No comment. Okay. <laughs> and the thing about Prince is I, I feel like he was the only one to do stuff like that, you know, to wear high heels, full makeup, booty chaps, everything else like that, and yet he had the baddest girls. His sexuality was never really questioned. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Of like course. there's a lot of other people who, you know, like young thug, yeah. people always yeah. call him gay and yeah. this, that, yeah. and the third, but like Prince never really got that. But why do you think that is? It's I think it was timing number one and, and he's masculine. He he doesn't act fem feminine. If you know him, if you look at his videos, oh he's a man, you know? Uh and he portrayed that his essence was, you know, I'm beautiful but Watch your girlfriend over there, you know, because mm -hmm. uh, I'm not looking at you. I'm looking at your girlfriend. And his girlfriends were looking at Prince, you know. And I come from that space as well. I mean, I've heard rumors that uh, even about me uh, that people thought I was gay. But as you know, talking to me, you can tell that I'm not. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And sure. show business, show business. Right. Yeah, man. Now, do you know any about the anything about the feuds that, that Prince allegedly had with like Rick James, Michael Jackson, that type of thing? I I heard those rumors, but you never actually nah, never it. firsthand. And, you know, okay. You know, I don't and and as you know or may not know, I don't I don't answer on stuff that I don't know anything about. Fair enough. Yeah, man. Okay, so you never managed to to get into Maserati. Into, I did not. Yeah, you know, into Prince's group. Yeah. Uh, so how did the relationship sort of progress after that with you guys? It kind of, you know, fell kind of level after that. Prince went on to do great things, and I went on to do more Shalimar stuff. Then I got out of Shalimar, and I did what I really wanted to do, which was be a rock and roll blues musician. Mm -hmm. You know, moving forward, signing to Interscope Records, you know, then, you know, embracing my Native American heritage side, mixed blood Native American, from the movie Dances with Wolves, mm -hmm. you know, thus, you know, doing flute CDs and stuff like that, and, yeah. you know, I had I didn't see Prince for a long, 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 long time after that. You know? Really, and we went on to do our things. Like, when was the last time you saw him? I th years. I mean, maybe 10, 15 years. 10, 15 years. Yeah. How did you feel when you heard the news about? Uh, I was brokenhearted. You know, as you know, you got that press release from me, and I was, I was d devastated, like the world, no doubt. You know, and. He was a great talent. He was a great human being, you know, and his humor, man. People, if you only knew his humor, he was so funny, so giving, so sweet. He was really a beautiful person. Yeah. I was recording my new flute CD for my label, Mysterium, Mysterium Records, you know, doing my thing. And uh, I had a song called Lavender Touch that I wrote in 2006. And I was recording that song, and my phone was blowing up, dude, in the studio. Prince is dead. And I'm like, what? You know, the internet. Vlad, yeah. so I'm like, eh, yeah, right. He's not dead. I yeah. found out it was true. I was so brokenhearted that, you know, I, 
I changed the name of the song to Lavender Kiss in honor of Prince, you know? Yeah. And Lavender, as we know, is just another shade of purple, so. Yeah. Yeah, I was devastated. You know, recently, uh, Sinead O'Connor uh, accused uh, Arsenio Hall yeah. of being Prince's drug supplier, yeah. and, and I, I guess Arsenio suing her and so forth. Right. Like, what's your take on all that? It's, it's, it's back to that opinion, and everybody's got one, and, and, and when someone's gone, you can say anything about that person or persons that you want. I have no knowledge of it. I did the Arsenio Hall show with Shalimar. Arsenio and I were friends in the Eddie Murphy days. I never saw it. I know nothing about it. I could really care less. Wait, was there a lot of drug use during that time? Because the 80s were pretty, pretty popping when yeah, it came man. to drugs. Yeah, man. 80s were totally wild. But did I see anything? Nah. And I wasn't looking. I could care less. I was doing my own thing. And, you know, I'm one of those guys that my business is mine. I, that's just the way I am. If it was happening, I didn't see it. I could never comment on it. And, and that's the way I roll. Gotcha. Yeah, man. Now, now you were, I guess, allegedly in a group with Lenny Kravitz at one point? No. No, that's not true? No, no. <laughs> okay. I mean, you know, I was never in a group with Lenny. It, the funny thing about it is when you're uh, a mixed blood Native American or black or mulatto or anything, everybody puts you in one bowl and tries to mix you all together to mm -hmm. somewhat put you all, like, linked. And no, I, the only, my connection with Lenny Kravitz is... Cindy Blackman Santana, Carlos's wife, who used to play and still does sometimes with Lenny Kravitz. She is the drummer for Lenny Kravitz, who's now playing with Santana. That's all. That's my really link okay. to Lenny. So what are you working on these days? Oh, dude, I'm doing right now, of course, my blues project, my American Horse project, my rock and roll band with Steve Ferroni from Tom Petty's band and uh, David Santos. But my baby right now, I've decided to move back into Native American flute playing, which I do, and, and uh, I'm Get doing a flute right there. Yeah, man, I wanted, to, I wanted to bring this and honor you, actually, Vlog. Okay. And I'm doing for Mysterium Records, uh, a, a healing therapy flute record, mm -hmm. a new age sort of a thing. And uh, on it is Native American flute. But well, I do an honor song when I meet people that I want to do, and, and, and I want to play this for you, and it's an honor song, and, and it's for you. I'm honored. Thank you. You're welcome. The thing about it is when, when I meet someone, it's just playing, and it's never written. For you. Thank you. This is my butterfly honor flute, and this is on the new record, uh, Native American Flute is Therapy, and uh, it's all about you know healing, you know, sure. brother. And uh, I'm honored to be on Mysterium Awesome label, you know. Now you're you're half Native American. Yeah, I'm mixed blood Comanche Native and uh, Cherokee and Comanche and mulatto, so I've got everything going on, man. Sure. So, yeah. I mean. Being that you're so in touch with the uh, with the Native American community, yeah, like where do you think Native Americans are culturally these days? You know, in terms of the U.S. You know, what I mean, it's been such right. a, such a terrible history. Yeah, and, you know, what I mean, I, I, I mean, I've studied Native American reservations and how yeah. they're the poorest yeah. places in the country, and how there's so much alcoholism yeah. and, and despair and so forth. Like, you know, where do you think the Native American community is right now? Well, I mean, people don't understand that there's 500 nations. Right. That means 500 different Native American nations. I think, I feel, and this is my opinion still, that we're that most Natives are still struggling for that one spot to get comfortable to, to, to push forward after being oppressed for so long. And, you know, it's passed down from even generation to generation in reservation and tribal uh, generations, too. So... Uh, we're, we're, the skins we call each other are just trying to 
to fit in the world as human beings and, and to do the right thing and be recognized that way. Most people think that Native Americans as sovereign nations, when you get a casino, you're rich and uh, life is great for you. That's not really what happens, man. Mm -hmm. Not all Native Americans have a casino, number one. And sometimes uh, tribes get money and the money doesn't flow downward. And, yeah. and, you know, and, and people are left still the way they were. Right. It's an ongoing issue and, and hopefully that humanity will see that the Native American people are the first people of the land and, and they need your help, we need your help and, and we want to be part of America because this is our America as well as it is yours. That's how it works. Uh, how do you feel about the Washington Redskins, the Atlanta Braves, Yeah, I think the Seminoles, right, right. and so forth? The, the, like it, it's, you know, you don't really see other races <laughs> being put on right. on display like that. I mean, I guess you have the fighting Irish, but it's not yeah, it's right. not really the same. Well, I mean, you know, again, we're talking about opinions, my opinion. It's it's a double-edged sword. Are they honoring us? Power, redskins. Yeah. That's power, bro. They're talking about right there. Mm -hmm. Redskins, all that stuff. Are they making fun of you? You have to make that own determination. I'm not political. I don't get in that 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 place. I don't go there, you know. Right. Uh, in my personal opinion, I'm both. I don't, are you honoring me? Are you honoring our ancestors? Or are you just getting paid? We, we know what the answer is, I'm sure, but right. is it gonna change? I, I don't know. Well, I remember in the 90s, me and my friends used to drink uh, Crazy Horse yes. malt liquor. And, and that, that right there, I know a lot of people, a lot of Native Americans were upset about because of the alcoholism and, uh, and, and the I, community and you're making a malt liquor. Yes. <laughs> And you know what, and, and that's to me is, is, as you said, I mean, Crazy Horse was a, a Native American hero as we know, right. it's a, a sacred entity that way. And I thought that was disrespectful, putting right. on a bottle of liquor, I mean. Yeah, like making Abraham Lincoln bullets or something. Right? Like, you know, it's yeah. one of those things agree, where it's like, yeah. come on. Like, come on, I mean, you yeah. know, enough is enough. I mean, that, you know, that's, that was wrong, I, I feel too. You know, I mean, yeah. you can only go so far with abuse and, Capitalism, as we know, you know, give me a break on some yeah. of that. Yeah, and I don't, stuff. I don't think that, that Native Americans were involved in that project. Of course all. not. I mean, why would, why would the Lakota people, who Crazy Horse was from, put him on a beer bottle or can? <laughs> yeah, it doesn't make you know, it, it's disrespectful. Pretty bad. Yeah, man. All right, I think we're good. Mickey. Yeah, I just want to say one more thing. I'm, I, I'm happy to be here, no doubt. And I want to just feature my necklace that we made for this interview for Prince. Dope. You know, I just love it, it's dope. This is with the Lavender Kiss. This is gonna be part of, uh, you know, my whole homage to my friend. You know, Jerome Jewelers made this for me, the guys that make all my turquoise. And turquoise to us, the blue stone, we call it prolongs life, you mm -hmm. know? I just wanted to say that to you and thank you for having me, man. Thank it's been my pleasure coming. and hopefully I can do it again, Vlad. I'm, I'm a fan of Drake. I'm a fan, fan of the idea of Drake, so. No disrespect against Drake. What do you mean by the idea of Drake? What does that mean? I mean that if he has a ghostwriter, he's an idea. He's not meaning that it's it's a perception created that he's not really writing the lyrics, and it's a, it's, yeah, it's just like an, here let's 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 make this in the factory and put it out. I'm just on top of my game right now, Vlad, and uh, I'm just getting blessed. I'm booked four or five times a week, six to seventy-five k a show, man. I'm, I'm just I'm, I'm I'm winning right now, man, and I'm just. Instead of trying to increase my hustle.